John Peebleshank. From Ogro Up, Rita Sofer. Bishop John Spong. And Brian Kemper. All right, let's read our title. He is the national director of a Generation X anti-abortion group called Rock for Life. Brian Kemper. Brian. He is the author of more than a dozen controversial books on Christian faith. The Bishop of Newark, the Most Reverend John Spong. Bishop. Hey, John. Always great to see you, Glad sir. To see you. Thank you for coming. He is a very talented comedian and an award winning actor, our pal John Fugelsang. There you are. And she's an Emmy award winning actress and the star of Oh, Grow Up, Tuesdays at 8.30, right here on ABC. Rena Sofer. Rena. Thank you for coming. Okay. Now, it is our uh, Meaning of Life show, part two. You were here for the first one, remember? Yes. It was the day John F. Kennedy's plane went down, so oh. it was naturally fit into all that Meaning of Life stuff. Let's talk about some of the things we didn't get to. Uh, one, about life being precious. I've had debates on this panel with lots of people. I have always maintained life itself is not necessarily precious. It's rather easy to make. Uh, it's a lot harder to, <laughs> a lot harder to well. prevent. And um, I think it's quality of life that is precious. And let me just pose a hypothetical question. If you had to run into a building and save either a newborn baby or the President of the United States, who would you save? The, the first baby. one you reach. Absolutely. Absolutely mm -hmm. the first one you reach. You have a moral obligation to well, save. Well, that would be Clinton. Because he yeah. would definitely... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, uh, no, I'm... No. You have a moral obligation to, to save every life that you can save, and you can't put one value over another. So if you go into that building, the Why? first person you see, you would pick up and try to Why? save them. Why? Come would. on. You can't... You, can, you know this now. Come on. I, 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 I don't know this. Okay. We do not have the eminence to determine which lives are more valuable than others. We can't do that. The Germans tried it in 36, and it didn't work out too good, and the HMOs are trying it now. You know, we're not God. No. We're not God. We don't have that power to decide which life is more valuable. Every life is of equal value. I mean, if Backstreet every Boys... Every life is not of equal value. <laughs> well, yeah, Backstreet Boys should burn. I mean, if they're there, I'd slam uh, the door. Uh, you see? <laughs> In God's eyes, every life is valuable. Maybe society puts more people as more important than others, but th there are no but people that are important. But the way you talk for God with such certainty... We get God and well, our social values mixed up frequently. Uh... I don't, know it's a, I don't know it's a good story for a comedy show, but in, in 1988, my first wife died, and people all over the diocese had prayed for her because I was well known. And I wondered if the garbage collector in downtown Newark had a wife who had cancer who died, and people didn't pray for her, would she die quicker, or would she die more painfully? And I decided that if, if that's the way this world works, I don't want to believe in that kind of God. So that, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. Do you, do you but agree if you got, with well, if, I'd like to say if you got a burning building and, and you've got a baby in there and you've got President Clinton in there, my thought would be you save the person who can't save themselves and he could possibly run out of there. And no, that, the that changes it. You're, you're fudging. Huh. <laughs> well, you you one of them will them. die unless you save. You can only save one. I save the baby anyway. You'd save the baby over the president? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have but a, I'm a mommy, so yeah. that would I'm always a father be also. my first thought. I'm a, I hate kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like if you went into a museum that was burning, wouldn't you save the statue that was already the great David rather than a lump of clay? That's a, that's a, that's a piece of art. You yeah. cannot compare that to a human life. There's absolutely no comparison whatsoever there. A human life is a million times more valuable than that. Why, are, are, why is every human life equally valuable? And how do you know that God talks to you so... How can you be so sure? See, I'm 99... Even as I'm saying this, I'll admit, I'm only 99% sure of what I'm saying. You've answered your question. <laughs> I'm only 99% sure of everything I've ever said. I'm only 99% sure that O.J. killed his wife. Yeah. Every... <laughs> I'm not kidding. This, well, well, I, uh, isn't, isn't it... 
How can you be sure? I am one hundred percent sure that God is in my life, that Jesus Christ died for me, and that He rose again, and that He paid for my sins. I'm a hundred percent sure of that. You're a I human. Know. But the voices in my head tell me the same thing, Bill. The voices in my head tell me what God wants and why I should write letters to Jody Foster. I know these things. I have the Bible. I have the Word of God. Someone, God someone once life, said, when I, talk, "When I talk to God, it's called prayer. When God talks to me, it's called paranoia." <laughs> How is the Bible, the Word of God, it was written by people? That's what I don't understand. It was inspired by God. It was definitely inspired well, by God. Well, there's some parts of it that I hate to blame God for. Uh, <laughs> I mean, some of it is really pretty awful. Women are treated as property in great sections of the Bible, even in the Ten Commandments. The Tenth Commandment says, You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Yeah, it's like the, the ass there is a donkey, like in case you didn't know. <laughs> and, you know... It, that means the neighbor in that is a male. If, if and you the look wife, at the ox, and the ass, and other possessions are possessions. And I don't. I think anything that treats a woman as less than fully human is. is look at wrong. how Jesus Christ commanded man to treat his wife. He said, you, "You said you treat your wife like Christ treats the church. Christ was a servant to the church, and we are supposed to be a servant to our wife, not not this. Hey, woman, go fix me a turkey pot pie. That's no, I, absolutely I, I, ridiculous. I think and that a true was, Christian does not treat his wife that way. Yeah. And but once what? again, you're a human being. Yes. The human beings who can't figure out, how the brightest of them, what makes cancer. We can't figure out magic tricks. We didn't know the Berlin Wall was going to fall. But you're 100% sure of the biggest cosmic question there is. Absolutely. Explain that to me. Well, there's been some amazing... First of all, amazing things that have happened to me in my life. I've had miraculous healings. I've just... I was pulled out of... You're a, interpreting a them. Interpreting them? I had ligaments grow back and attach to my knee. Like That's not no. interpreting... Exactly. Just all, just all of a I sudden, had, they my, went. I, I had, I had ligament surgery. Like in a movie, that it was pretty much a feeling like that. I had surgery. I had ligaments ripped out of my knee. I re-ripped them in an accident. Scheduled for emergency surgery the next day. I prayed to God. I felt a tingling feeling go through my knee. I got up five minutes later and I walked away from that bed and I've never been back to the hospital And again. maybe that was the power you had within that was yourself. The power of and maybe it was Allah, my Judeo-Christian friend, huh? <laughs> Ever ask yourself that? No. <laughs> Maybe it was Vishnu, pal. <laughs> you should leave them alone. Maybe you're a cyborg, it's liquid metal terminator. It's, it's a matter of faith. Why does God care about your knee? It's a good, it's a good question. Because That's God loves question. me, just like he loves every single human being He loves being your equally. knee more oh. than he loved his I would, wife? I wouldn't I mean, want I to, uh, yeah. I, wouldn't, I don't want to ever stand in judgment upon anybody's witness and experience. But I could only say that God for me is so much bigger than my faith, my church, my world, my understanding of life. And I think I walk into the mystery of this God every day. But for, I, God forbid that I sp spend time telling people that what God is like. I don't believe there's a soul that knows what God is like. I know only what I experience, and I cannot universalize from that. Thank yeah. you, Bishop, as always. We will be right back. Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, brought to you by Corona. Join us tomorrow for Bill's Intervention, when our guests will be Kennedy, Reverend Tony Campolo, and Rabbi Stephen Leader. All right, it's uh, our Meaning of Life show, part two. There's only four days left before life ends. Let's um, <laughs> get back to it. You were mentioning the Word of God, the Bible, and you mentioned some of the inconsistencies. Now, in Leviticus, I know it says things like, God tells you not to eat pork, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do not go near women menstruating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you accidentally are... touch a woman while she's menstruating, you are unclean in the eyes of God. Right. right, and you have to go through a mikvah to be clean. So if you bump elbows at the wrong house, frau in the Kotex aisle at Walmart... <laughs> Ooh, the power that we have uh, over you. <laughs> don't engage in homosexual acts. No, nope, only uh, men. There's uh, no law about women with women. Oh. <laughs> and... Apparently... And, <laughs> Apparently the, uh, the Bible was inspired by Howard Stern. Yeah, Playboy After Dark uh, had the same rule as the Old Testament. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> uh, slavery's okay as long as it's with people from foreign lands. Um, you shouldn't wear clothes made of two types of fabric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those poly-blend hordes of heathens. Yes. Um, and there are 40 other crazy laws in the Jewish religion, like you can't drag a chair across a dirt floor on a Saturday or else you're creating... 
It's true. Creating what? You create you create um, a path for water to go, so oh. therefore you're like irrigating. And why would you, you do that anyway? Eat, you can't you, eat. <laughs> why are Jews uh, dragging You can't eat watermelon care? on the Sabbath because you're separating the fruit from the seed. Right. But is that in the Bible? Yes. The, okay. So there are forty halachot. Yeah. So, what do you think about all this, Brian? How do you? How, what? What is a Bible? A person who believes fundamentally in the Bible say about things like this that where it's advocating things like don't go near menstruating women in slavery. Well, how, I, you, how is that the inspiration and word of God? Well, I I don't think the Bible is advocating slavery in, it in a sense. Does. I, it not, does. I'm it not a Levitical does. scholar. I don't know the Old Testament as well. Now, Paul I know even gives you instructions on how to treat slaves. Mm -hmm. He's in favor of a kinder and gentler slavery. Uh, <laughs> I think there are parts of the Bible that are actually embarrassing, particularly when you make claims for it as sort of God's spoken word. Uh, I think we've got to break loose from that. The Bible is filled with all kinds of, of ideas, some of which are quite sacred, and somehow you have to be able to separate. If I had to sum up the Bible as in, in sort of a three-sentence thing, I would say that what I learned from the Hebrew Scriptures primarily is that everybody is holy. Everybody is holy. What I learned from the Christian scriptures is that everybody is loved infinitely. The Jesus story really means there's nothing you can do that, that puts you outside the love of God. And what I learned from the history of the Christian community is that everybody's called to be everything that they can be. Now, if we can get that essence out of that holy book and then begin to live it, uh, but, then we're having a different world. But we spend our but time fighting back and forth about right. whether... The Christianity that got filtered through southern Europe or through northern Germany or through England or Scotland is better than somebody else's Christianity. Mm -hmm. I don't believe God knows... And also that, that it's not meant to be taken metaphorically. That's my issue with the Bible. Right. I think Literally or metaphorically? That I think it is meant to be taken metaphorically. Yeah. I think the people who wrote it were smart and the people who read it today are morons mm -hmm. when they don't get it that they were trying to teach us something metaphorically, well, that's not the, literally. That's the whole hang-up with, with the rules laid out in, in, in Genesis and in Leviticus and also in Deuteronomy and Exodus. Uh, there are so many rules that would kill us all working on the Sabbath. There go priests and pro footballers. Children well, who have Christ, disrespect you know, or curse their parents. Every 14 year old in the world. Right. Incest. Right. Half the Ozarks. You know, we're all going somehow. <laughs> and Christ I feel that. Also that addressed some of those issues. And he came to fulfill the law. Christ addressed those when he went and he fed the, uh, the disciples on the Sabbath. And he said, you know, listen, you guys are following the letter of the law at some points. No, I'm not saying his words exactly. I'm paraphrasing. Sort of. And he said, if, if your child fell into a ditch, wouldn't you pull him out? That's not actually work. That's helping someone. They're, they were following more the letter of the law than the spirit Christ of the law. Christ came to overturn the law, would it be the and death penalty fulfilled. or whatever, to present a, a new order. The problem I have with Leviticus is it's the, the, the catch-all book that people use to say that same-sex relations are wrong. Right. I don't mind picking well, and choosing and the, the new, parts you want to well, believe in, but and when the you new do Testament it, to put somebody it else in a so box. Also. The New Testament also says so. Bishop, I give it to you. Says what? It's <laughs> what? what? Jesus never said anything said, about... Well, it says that a man should be married to one wife and a woman to, to one husband. Well, what Paul actually says in, in the first chapter of Romans is that, that homosexuality is punishment because you didn't worship God properly. Well, friends, if that's the way God operates, I don't especially want to worship this God any longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what it says. Well, he created... No. God created man and woman to, to come together in a certain way. One, if you're, committing, if, you're, if you're committing homosexuality, then you're also committing fornication and adultery because you're not married. See, I don't... I don't you know, Adam and but, Eve weren't but, married. There was no clergyman there to perform is, that ceremony. <laughs> and, 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 Brian, this is the thing. You're picking and choosing... You're picking and choosing the parts that you want to believe in. Either you adhere to all of it, which no one has ever done, no, ever, no ever, way. ever... Except Jesus Christ. Oh, no. He is right. the only perfect man ever. You know what Leviticus says? It says, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh, nor print any marks upon you. Why don't you finish the rest of it? Unto the dead. There was a group of Levitical priests at the time no. who were worship. No. They were worshiping the false god of Baal, and they were tattooing themselves and cutting themselves under the false god of Baal. And it says, do not do this unto the dead. But, but you also cut your hair at the temple, so you're going to hell anyway. Oh, no. 
I am going to heaven because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and, and Savior. And you're pretty sure that you're guaranteed into heaven for that reason. That's right. And uh, if somebody doesn't, then they're not going to get into heaven. I will never say someone's not going to heaven. I'm not God. I cannot judge someone to hell. I can tell you what the Bible but says. But you just did it, Brian. No, you... I will tell you what it says to go to heaven. It says that you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You must be born again. Is Gandhi in hell, Brian? I don't know. I am not God. I don't know. But you what just you, said if you don't you know accept what? Jesus Christ, and Gandhi did not. Is God in the Jr. in hell, Brian? Words. I don't know. <laughs> if you proselytize his words, then that's what you believe. That's I will, what I will that's preach what his gospel. Christians believe. I will preach his gospel, and I will preach his words, but I will never condemn someone to hell because I am not God. Okay, I got to preach the network's words right here. We'll be right. got on to talking about how you get into heaven and uh, if everyone can. Um, I guess we didn't decide where you'd come down on that, but it's been much in the news lately because the Pope went to India and said, uh, look, I'm not going to apologize for my views that you should proselytize. You should try to convert. And the Southern Baptist Convention said the same thing recently. They put out a guide on how to convert the Jews. And uh, people who are not of the Christian faith, I think, resent this because they feel like you're saying to them, our religion is better, and if you can't follow us, you can't get into heaven. And our God can right. beat up your God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the, 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 one of the commandments in the Bible, not one of the Ten Commandments, but one of the things to said is to go, go into the world and preach the gospel. Of your Bible. Right. Well, I yeah. think you but not of my gospel, Bible. But the gospel is the good news that you're loved. It's not that you've got to follow a certain creedal formula. It actually mm -hmm. very much is the, that you have to follow Jesus Christ. That's what the gospel is. Well, this gets back to what we were talking about a second ago. It's one thing if you want to go preach the word of Christ and say, love everybody, including your enemies, and, and accept people and forgive people and have compassion for people. But it's another thing to say, you're going to hell if you don't get on my dodgeball team. Yeah. You know? Right. Well, that's, you see, there's a difference right there. Is, is one, I don't tell anyone they're going to hell. I don't stand on a, preach, on a street corner and preach well, at people. Well, you want say, it both ways. No, you're, I, saying, I, you're saying you are. You do want it both ways. You, when, when you're saying what you're saying, mm -hmm. you're saying to us right. what he's yeah. saying. But, but, I don't, what, what I hear but then you when saying, we ask you about it, you said no, because right. I'm not God. What no. I hear you saying is that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then you're not really believing in the right God. And, and I find that to that's be... That's what the Bible says. But so. that's what your Bible says. My Bible does not say that. I've never been taught Jesus that Christ in my Bible. Jesus Christ is the Bible. absolute truth. Sometimes. To you. Some to you, to you, yeah. not to me. My faith is wonderful for me. I love my religion. I don't push it on anybody else. What is your religion? Judaism. Okay. And I'm very happy in it. And I have a friend who's a Jew who believes in Jesus. And he gives me lots of information. <laughs> Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Messianic Jew. It's like vegetarians for meat. I know, I don't... <laughs> well, Jesus was Jewish. I don't get it either. Yeah, no, Jesus but, was Jewish. But he tries to explain it to me, and he, but he does it in a way that he, he, he likes to open up a form mm -hmm. of conversation, but he never ever tells me that I'm wrong in what I believe. But when I have That's... conversations with other people, like the way I'm feeling from you, is that I am wrong in what I believe because I am not believing in the You're right Bible. You're asking me my beliefs. When I sit down with my friends, I go to Gargoyle's Coffee House all the time, and I sit down with kids who aren't Christian, and they ask me questions about God, about my religion, and they all come to me and ask me different things, and they all respect me, because I don't go there and preach at them, but they all know what I believe. Well, well some years ago, Thomas Harris wrote a book called I'm Okay, You're Okay. Yeah. And in that book, he said, if you approach anybody from the vantage point of saying, I'm okay, and you're not okay, and you're not going to be okay until you get to be like me, right. you're being hostile. Right. Well, no, I don't want anyone to know. I don't, I don't believe... I don't believe that... I don't believe you can preach the love of God with hostility to save my life. I don't believe that. So, so somehow all of these imperialistic religious ideas that we try to put on people are just very destructive. The Gospels didn't get written for 40 to 70 years after Jesus was, was exactly. crucified. I've tried to make that case that's and very people clear. argue with they me. Well, they, but that's yet. fact. And, it, and they're written side. in a language that Jesus never spoke. They're right. written in Greek. So by the time we read them, they're 40 to 70 years after and they're written in a language he didn't speak. Now, I don't know about you, Bill, but I don't believe anybody will quote me accurately 40 to 70 years after I've died. I right. just don't believe it. Or even tomorrow, perhaps. We will be right yeah. back. Yeah.
谢谢。Tell me all the bad things I do wrong, Brian. You're gonna want to watch this one. Uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot, and uh, oh, that's all I have to say. The mass has ended. Go in peace. Thank you very much. <laughs>